Hi everyone and welcome to my channel, Dr. Coco's Medmonics. Today I'm going to be going over obstructive and restrictive lung diseases. These show up a lot and they always end up being arrow questions and so I kind of wanted to do a little um, how I go and approach these questions and how uh, it might help you on exam day if you're forgetting like what goes up and what goes down. If you can kind of think through it, you might be able to get the answer. Um, so let's get started. Uh, in broad terms, I always think obstructive, you cannot get your air out. Obstructive, you cannot get your air out. And restrictive, you can't get your air in. Okay, if you can remember those two, you might be able to think through a question and figure out what goes up and what goes down. And these are always the things that they ask about as far as like, numbers going up or going down and so we have um the frc or the functional residual capacity right here which is like the expiration and the residual volume um here's the residual volume down here that's just like what's left over that really isn't involved in like breathing much at all it's like your storage form for your rainy day oxygen form I guess, if you want to think of it that way. Uh, total lung capacity is literally like all of these put together. So it's the total. And then we have um, the FEV1 and F over FVC ratio is uh, one of the most common that's asked as far as, you know, if it's up or down, is it restrictive or obstructive? And this is just like the um, expiration over the res uh, residual capacity. And these are all as far following like a function and these are the functional lung exam tests. So that makes sense that we're talking about something that's functional and whether or not it is functional helps us determine the pathology. So you might see these um, charts and they might ask you like, what is what? Um, first aid has a way to memorize it, but I really just think about, okay, here is like normal breathing that I'm doing right now, you know, in, out, in, out. This is your uh, tidal volume right here. And then if you go up in your volume, you're obviously inspiring, IRV. And if you let out, you're obviously expiring, so ERV. And then what's left over is residual, right? The residual volume. And these, as far as like knowing um, what is what, knowing total is important that it's all of these. The vital capacity is what's involved in like you actually breathing. So the capacity of what keeps you alive, what keeps you vital, that's the way I think of it. Um, func functional residual capacity is like, if you're just breathing normal, well, what's functionally left? We're not talking about um, as far as like, if you expire as much, as much, as much as you can, you know, that's just the residual volume, but functionally, what are we doing? We're just normal breathing, we're tidal voluming. So the functional residual capacity will be all of this, the expiratory reserve and the um, residual. And then inspiratory capacity is going to be how much you can inspire total. And so that's going to have to include this uh, vital as well as all that you can inspire at once. And six liters is the normal like max that you can get. I've had questions on that. It's kind of weird number to know, but... So I've got this picture again up and we're going to compare obstructive where you can't get air out versus restrictive where you can't get air in. And um, when you go to, you know, learn this topic, I'm not going to talk so much about like which ones are obstructive, which ones are restrictive. Um, but as a broad term, obstructive is like the COPDs. So um, chronic bronchitis, emphysema, and then asthma and bronchiectasis. And then restrictives, I like to think of things, obviously that's gonna restrict you from getting air in, um, but also just thinking of um, the diseases that you would get either from an autoimmune uh, problem or from a work exposure. So the pneumoconitis is. Um, but looking at these, we're just gonna look at these like different um, lab values and what goes up and down. And so restrict, obstructive you can't get air out right so you're not getting any air out so you're going to have an increase in your air left over in your lung 
And so that includes your functional residual capacity. You can't get your air out, right? Your residual volume is going to go up. Again, you can't get that air out, okay? And if you can't get this air out, but you're still um, breathing in the same amount every time, your total lung capacity is going to increase slowly because you're taking this air in, but you cannot get it out, right? So you just residually have more air. And that's why um, when you think of obstructive, the classic is usually chronic bronchitis and they call them blue bloaters. And I think those is people who just have all of this air in them. They're like bloating from air. And then, so you can't get your air out, right? You have increased air left over and decreased air getting out. And so your um, expiratory is going to go down and your functional vital capacity is going to go down because you're not using that air, right? You're not expiring it because you can't get it out. And then you're not using it for vital um, capacity. You're not using it to keep you going because it's kind of just, you know, Jay chilling down there, like not doing anything. So your FEV1 over FBC, they're both of these are going to go down. Your FEV1 is going to go down. Your FBC is going to go down. And that makes the entire ratio FEV1 over FBC go down. And that makes perfect sense, right? Because we're not um, really working very well here. Like we're not getting our air out. We have a bunch left over. We're bloating. And these people are going to have problems breathing. They're going to um, definitely like expire themselves. Um, not ex they're not going to expire, but they're going to have problems as far as breathing and getting winded very fast. Versus restrictive, they can't get air in, right? So if you can't get your air in, you're going to have less air in the lung versus obstructive, you have more air in your lung. And so in restrictive, you're going to have a decrease in your total lung capacity because you're not getting the air in. And then your um, vital capacity is going to go down as well, but your FEV1 is going to stay the same. So because you, you can't get air in, you can still get it out though. So you're expiring just fine, but your vital uh, functional vital capacity, so the amount of air that you're using in this uh, breathing process is still going down the same as it would in obstructive. So if you look at the ratio though, if your FEV1 is staying the same and your FBC is going down in the denominator, your ratio is going to increase, which seems kind of counterintuitive unless you think of it as the formula. Um, and that's a key thing that they like to go about on the test is that your FEV1 over FBC ratio will be increased in restrictive and decreased in obstructive. Last quick thing I want to go over is um, your PE findings. So if you have a patient in front of you, um, more likely you're reading a question stem and they're saying like, oh, they're dull or hyper resonant to percussion or whatever. Like, what does that mean? Um, so dull would mean that there's some type of fluid in there. So like a pleural effusion, maybe they have like a pneumonia or atelectasis, like something like that's going on where they have fluid either in or around the lung versus hyper resonance gonna be air, okay? So you percuss that person, they say that it's hyper resonant, that's mean that there's gonna be air, and the only thing that can cause that would be a pneumothorax, whether a simple or a um, tension pneumothorax, where you, know, you popped your lung balloon and now there's air around there. And then you have all these weird ass tests lung test. I remember going over them in my clinical medicine class and they're like, oh, what about a gophony and whispered pectililoquy and then you put your hands on their back and they say toy boat or something and that's frematis. And I'm like, what the heck is all of this crap? Like, I swear to God, you guys are making up words as days go by. And all of these lung tests that, um, really have the weirdest words, I swear. They're all for consolidation. And that's the way I memorize it. So if you have consolidation, that would be either a pneumonia or um, a pulmonary edema. And that's for agophony, whispered pectiloquy, and frematis being increased. 
And that firmatus just means like vibration. And so that makes sense that we would have like this increase in this vibration through the fluid um, when you have something as far as like a pneumonia goes. So dull is fluid, hyperresonant is air, and then all of these weird ones, agophony, pectiloquy, and fremitus would be increases in consolidation states. Um, hopefully this helped you guys. Not as much as a mnemonic, as um, a way that you can think of it when you're stressed out during the test. Okay, is am I getting air out? You know, am I getting air in? Am I struggling? Where am I struggling? And what's going up or down? Hopefully this video helped you. And if it did, please like and subscribe to my channel.